Hey everyone, it's Gretchen here with Cat and Paul. So a DIY how to make this uh, paper with, um, I call it like leopard paper because it just tends to come out when you spray it. So let's get started. What I have is a roll of Dollar Tree parchment paper, baking paper. I took it out of the box and I don't have it with me, but it comes in this roll and I just cut off what I want. I haven't tried any other brands, um, so I don't know how well they would work. So this is from the Dollar Tree. So I cut some rolls here, or some sheets, and you'll see it just wants to roll back up, but that's okay. When you dye it or stain it, it will flatten right out. So I kind of have a step process going, that way you can see everything in, in progress. So this is one already done. And there's various things you can do it, you know, with it. You can um, make it your own how you want. And then this was one I had dipped earlier into my stain. Now I haven't tried this with coffee or tea. This is actually a food color stain I'm using. So this one's drying, and you can see there. That's just with dipping it in the, the liquid. It doesn't. Um, it, it bites it. It doesn't want to. Uh, stick adhere but it will dry and when that dries these dots are all permanent so you can't take it back off and it won't come off you can't rub it off so <clears throat> so let's go ahead and get started um I'll show you what I mean so let's go ahead and take one and dip it in I like to use gloves because it will stain your fingernails and you'll see how, see how it's just fighting does not want to stick to the paper at all. It runs off. So let me dip that again. And it's very adorable. Um, it, I don't think I've ever ripped one while doing this, ripped any paper, whereas when I um, stain that kind of, you know, the copier paper, it will rip when it gets wet if you pull it too hard. So that's what it looks like. Again, it's going to fight you. At this point, let me slide this over. Very messy. I keep uh, lots of paper towels on hand. You can rub it if you want. It's just going to move around, but it will dry like that. See how it's, you can see where my hands moved it around? But let's go ahead, I'm gonna dry off my fingers. And what I have here is Tim Holtz Distress Stain. This is an antique linen. Give it a good shake. And it's optional, all this is optional. You can do it however you want, but the more you play around with it, you know, some of the effects are, are really neat. And then I just gotta get it going. <laughs> See there, it's very light. I probably should use something darker. I'm gonna try to rub that before it just leaves circular dauber marks on the paper. So you can see there, there is a light antique linen look to it. Hopefully, I'm hoping the light catches everything. If not, I apologize. You'll just have to play with it and see what you get. Um, this is the magic right here. This walnut ink. I picked this up at AC Moore. I'm sure probably a dark ink would do the same thing. Maybe a shimmer mist. And all I do is spritz. You can see how dark that is. You can see what the paper towel looks like. And then this you do have to rub if you want that cool effect. So all I'm doing is rubbing it, bringing out the imperfections in the paper. See, it, it caught where I dabbed that distress ink. But that's okay. Irregularity, irregulars are perfect for this project. Mistakes are welcomed. So I'm just rubbing it. It's bringing out that really cool uh, design. Uh, that there's imperfections, making a starburst pattern on there. 
and then I just set it over to dry. And when it does dry, you can hear that it brings back that crinkle from doing everything to it. Now, something I haven't tried. I haven't tried using just a piece of paper, the, the um, parchment from Dollar Tree, just with the spray, just with the walnut stain. I don't know what it will do, so let's find out. I usually dip it first. So let's see what the happening is gonna happen. So we're gonna spritz it. And what's really cool, see all that's over spray? When you put, um, when you stain a piece of paper and lay it down, it will suck that, it will actually take that back up for you. And your paper will have that darker spots on it. So it is picking it up, but it's more smearing it. There. That is just what it looks like with the walnut stain. So it's definitely darker. Um, I guess, the, you know, the stain kind of makes it so it spreads the color better. And that's the difference. So this is with a... Uh, that food color stain on it and then this is without I don't know if I like it because it's very light then so let's go ahead and dip it into the stain my cat is so unhappy right now but I don't can't pause right now because I'm just using the regular phone so she'll just have to get over it. I'm gonna dip it, see what it does. So you can still see it in there, but it seems like, well, let's go ahead and rub it down first. Let's rub it, see what happens. I'm gonna take my paper towel. And you can see, again, you can let it dry just like that. These would eventually dry, it takes a while. You can use a um, heat gun. I have not done the oven. I have taken the heat gun to it though because I was anxious to use a piece. And I didn't wanna wait for it to dry because it does take hours and hours. It's like water drops drying in your house. It just takes, takes a while. Wow, that really, uh, just kind of changed it almost like a marble so I think I'll just keep it this way I'm not going to do anything else to it it's almost like a marbling effect on the paper so we'll move this over to dry I keep all this paper here I mean oh, could you imagine doing this on your real floor <laughs> with no, no protection <laughs> and then this is the piece I'm this, you, you can tell it's starting to dry because it kind of gets that crispy back to it. So I might go ahead and do the walnut stain on it. I like to keep, like, you know, use that just same paper towel over and over. And now this is, so I would say this paper here was 50% um, dry, 60%. And you can see I am putting the stain over it. And it does look different, doesn't it? Let me try to catch these corners with the stain. So, wow, I like that. So, again, this paper was, uh, I had dipped it left it dry it was about 60 percent dry and then i put the walnut stain on there and it, you can see the splotches from the stain you can see the uh like the starburst patterns from the walnut stain coming out in the paper and it will dry and be nice and crispy so that's that sheet of paper this one we stained first, or we spritzed the walnut stain and then we dipped it and it kind of came out a lot lighter with a more of a marble effect. This was the first one I did. I did use the Stress Ink on it. 
Um, you can see some some swooshing in there with it. That's where I daubed it, and then um, dipped it, and then just uh, used the walnut stain. And then this is one I was doing earlier, just so it would dry. Again, this was Distress Ink, and then I dipped it and used the walnut uh, stain. So there are four variations. I'll take my glove off, and um, I just take it off whenever you use this glove because until it gets a hole in it. And I just picked these up at Walmart. You can find them in the cleaning section in a big box. So, of course my fingers get sweaty, but I just reuse it then. So that's it, four variations on that staining. Dollar Tree paper, comes in a roll. I got my, my stain over here, which is food color based. And then I have my walnut ink and then my distress stain if I want to use that. All right, so hopefully you guys try this and let me know how your paper comes out. And uh, thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.